Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for sticking with us through all of Ecomodernism 2021. As Thea just said, we've got a little bit left of our program. So please join me in wel welcoming Jared Barron to the stage for our last Future of Technology talk. Hi, everyone. Energy from the sun and wind is replacing fossil fuels to power the transition to a sustainable future. We need batteries to store this energy. Batteries are made from metals such as cobalt, nickel, copper, and manganese. Until now, we've been mining the earth for them, digging deeper and wider for lower quality ores. Nature disappears. Humans suffer. Earth suffers. But there's another way. Polymetallic rocks contain rich concentrations of these base metals needed to make batteries. As stewards of these rocks, we've partnered with top ocean scientists to baseline the environment from seafloor to surface and study the impact of collecting them. If we use them to make a billion electric car batteries, we can dramatically reduce our environmental and social impact for the whole planet. We're building a world where metals are not mined and dumped, but rented and returned. So, everyone says that the future is green, but a green future is metallic. And that's a problem. The scale of the problem is just starting to be understood, especially in places like DC. The environmental movement is either in denial or heavily conflicted. So it's worth thinking about the problem because the climate change problem is a metals problem because windmills, electric batteries, solar panels are all very metal intensive. And it takes nine times more metal to build a megawatt of solar or wind power compared to coal power. An electric vehicle contains five times more of the key metals than a combustion engine. But there's good news. And the good news is that metals are infinitely recyclable. But the bad news is that we don't have enough of them in the system to recycle. And we're going to mine more metal in the next few decades than we've mined in the entire history of humankind. So we focus on four key metals, and these are the metals that are driving the battery transition. Nickel, copper, cobalt, and manganese. And we've seen America get very energy independent through oil and gas, but they're at risk of losing that mineral independence because it's trickier when it comes to battery metal. There's higher concentration in fewer hands. And America has no substantial reserves of these key metals apart from some lithium. And the supply chain is complex. It's about 50,000 miles long. It's dominated by China, followed by Korea and Japan. There we go. And all of the key metals that we talk about are moving into supply shortage. But if we focus on nickel and copper, you can see by the end of this decade, we're talking about severe shortages, which will lead to much higher prices and can put at risk the, the whole transition to electric. And 2025 is, is yesterday because it takes a decade, 15 years to get any new production, any new resource into production. And where most of those resources are today are in really challenging places, for example, um, our carbon sinks in Indonesia is the number one nickel producer and is forecast to be where all the growth comes from. Cobalt comes from the rainforests in the Congo. 
copper main market is from Chile and manganese from South Africa. And of course, there's, there's not just displacement of humans that's going to occur. Child labor is prevalent. But what doesn't get spoken about is what the high rate of mortality for adults working in these mines as well and how it impacts people's lives by dealing with these toxic materials. So, the mining industry is by far the biggest waste generator on the planet. And in fact, just to make one kilogram of battery metals generates around 400 kilograms of waste. And last year, there was about 190 billion tons of waste generated from the mining industry. And municipal waste globally was 2 billion tons. And this waste gets put into large stockpiles. We don't see it here in West Virginia. But unfortunately, these stockpiles have a habit of also leaking into our freshwater systems and destroying our pristine biodiverse habitats. And Sometimes these tailings dams have a habit of bursting. These tailings dams have to be kept in pristine condition forever. But unfortunately, they don't always work. And if you think about the average life of an American public company, it's around 20 years. So often they're not around to look after repatriation or to look after the environmental effects of their actions. That will be paid for by, by our superannuations going forward. So this shows the life cycle analysis for, for the materials to make one electric vehicle battery. So this is the impact of the battery for your one electric car that you may or may not have in your garage. We think there's a much better way and it's in the form of polymetallic nodules. And they lie unattached on the bottom of the Pacific Ocean literally on top of the seafloor, and they contain very high grades of the four metals that we need to power this green transition, nickel, copper, cobalt, and manganese. And we've identified around 1.6 billion tons of these nodules on two of our license areas. And that's enough to electrify the entire USA passenger fleet. And if we were to build our processing facilities on USA soil, it could reduce the supply chain by 50 times and could lead to America <clears throat> having a secure supply of these important battery metals. So at the moment, a lot of the growth is coming from, of nickel in particular, from our rainforests. And, and you can see on the right-hand side, this entry-level measurement of, of carbon shows that between 15 and 30 kilograms of carbon are stored per square meter. But in the abyssal zone, there is around 10 grams of carbon stored per square meter. And most of that is microbial bacteria living in the sediment. Doesn't mean it doesn't matter. We, we, we have already the regulator, the International Seabed Authority, has already put aside more area in protected zones than there is under exploration licenses at the moment. And we plan to collect them with our automated robot harvesters. We are currently building our first system in Holland with our partners, and they'll be tested in the Atlantic at the end of this year, and we'll be running a full-scale uh, pilot around this time next year in the CCZ. But the real breakthrough is when we move the nodules onshore. Because we're able to take these nodules and turn them into battery metals and generate zero waste and zero tailings. And that's a real game changer when we think about some of the challenges that, that lay in front of us when it comes to metal extraction. Now, with fossil fuels, we became very focused on air quality, on CO2 emissions. 
but that won't work when it comes to metals. We have to think from a, a more complete LCA analysis. We have to think about the impact on biodiversity, on, on fresh water supplies, on alternative land use. We have to look at a, across the full range of impacts because the fine print is going to matter as we really ramp up metal extraction. Thank you.